everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome, my name is Kiriel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a tutorial on the infamous fox eye look that's going around at the moment. What is the fox eye look, you ask? Basically, it's that supermodel, sultry, moody, I've got a headache, kind of eye look that elongates the eye and lifts the face and gives you a faux facelift basically. There's a photograph that's been circulating recently that's kind of made it more popular again. This is not a new makeup look, it's been around for many a year and it's the kind of go-to supermodel Charlotte Tilbury-esque kind of look, you know? I mean, the majority of the models and everything already look like this, so this is just an imitation <laughs> on how to get that kind of look, you know? I don't know what is, but you guys know what it means. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to do a really in-depth tutorial on not only the eye look in itself, but also little tips and tricks to make the illusion of the pulled back facelift look even more convincing on hooded eyes. Personally on myself, I have hooded eyes, one's more hooded than the other, that's completely normal, both sides of your face are not the same, but I wanted to show you how I achieved this look. I also made sure that in the shots that I wasn't raising my eyebrows or anything like that, so you can really see the way that this just naturally brings up the face just with the makeup. You don't need any tape, you don't need any of those facelifting things, I mean you can use them if you want, but this is just purely with makeup. I know there are currently loads of tutorials on this look, there's different hints and tips that have been added along the way, but this is just my take. Yeah, so without further ado, I'm gonna stop blabbing <laughs> and let's get right on into the tutorial. Let's get right on into this. I've done one eye off camera just because I really wanted to show you the difference and the power that these multiple things come together to create. I've seen a few tutorials online that just show you the eye look, but truly if you want to get the illusion of a lifted effect on the face, there's a few other things that go into it. Obviously the focus is gonna be on the eye look, but I just want to show you these other steps as well that'll really give you the illusion of a pulled up facelift effect you know so the basics of this is it's pretty much a tonal look and what I mean by that is you're working more with tones and shadows and depth and perception rather than color and creativity you know this is a very illusion based kind of look. It's better for you to use more skin tone colours or shadow colours. So as you can see on this eye, I haven't got too much warmth going on. It's more shadow going on on this eye over here just to create that winged out effect. I've done a similar look to this with purple. I've done that on my Instagram. I'll put it up by here. So you can do it with colours, but it's just not going to give you that kind of supermodel-esque kind of eye look, you know? But you do you. Whatever way you want to do it, you can do it. I'm also playing around with angles, so that being the angle of the brow, the angle of your contour slash highlight. All of these things are going to help you create that effect of a facelift. <laughs> you know, the Gigi Hadid or Bella Hadid face. I don't know who it was, The this image right here. I don't even know if it's the, any of the Hadids. I'm sorry. I'm so uncultured. But yeah, so first of all, what I'm gonna do is create almost a stencil for our winged liner. The way I'm gonna do this is actually with cream bronzer. You don't have to use a cream bronzer, you can use an oil bronzer. Preferably more of a cool tone contour colour that you use to sculpt your cheekbones, contour your nose, things like that. Just don't make it too warm because you're just gonna look like you've bronzed the area. <laughs> I'm going in with the new Fenty Beauty Cream Bronzer. I've literally just received these today. <laughs> I bought this and the blush and there should be already a review up on my channel I'll link it in the eye over here if you're interested but I'm just gonna take the slightest amount of this map out the shape that you want here with your contour it's better if you have a wider mirror so you can see both eyes and you can kind of look forward and stamp the product better to go in with little and then work your way up don't go in with too much product otherwise you may just have to blend it all the way and it'll be a disaster and it'll go everywhere so less is more and just build up the product. So I'm gonna follow just above where my lower lash line is. I don't wanna follow my actual lower lash line because it can drag the face down a little. Basically where my tight line ends and I'm gonna start by stamping it just by here. Just a little bit of product and then I'm going to start sweeping it up and out. So this is gonna be going towards the temple and as you can see that's already started to create this illusion of a higher face. I don't know what else to call it than a facelift. <laughs> But you're already starting to create that effect just with that tiny little line of contour. <laughs> I'm gonna have my sponge ready. This I've used on my face already so it's gonna be like my magic eraser kind of tool and anything that I feel is a bit too harsh I can go in and soften. This is a really soft natural-esque look. You know all the models are natural. They, 
they hardly wear any makeup this is just their natural ass faces so we're just creating the illusion so you want to be really soft with the shade so I'm just lightly going over that if you feel like any time that you brought it too low or anything you can just go underneath it just having a tool with the excess product is gonna help you if you make any mistakes <laughs> all right now i've done that i want to focus on the brow brow is another make or break thing with this my brows unfortunately do come down quite far they do have quite an arch i know people have shaved off the ends of their eyebrows to get the full-on look but i'm not that committed okay basically you want to have more of a straight line brow the way i'm gonna do that is i'm just going to bring out the arch slightly and make them slightly wider and just brush the hairs out to the side so again you're pulling the eye out so you've got that kind of illusion going on but without sacrificing any brow hairs <laughs> as you can see on this eye I've just kind of brought them up slightly and I've tried not to tail off too far in this angle that's just the natural way my brow goes so I can't help that but yeah I'm just gonna fill them in real quick and then just extend the arch slightly further towards my temple than usual obviously if you don't have that many brow hairs this isn't gonna be so much of a problem for you <laughs> but just make the shape a little bit more straight in that case if you don't have a lot of brow to work with another thing that can kind of help pull your brow out a little bit is doing brush strokes that actually go towards your temple on the side because it'll encourage that motion as well with your actual brow. When it comes to the arch as well, try and make sure that that's quite high. It gives you more of that lift effect and really helps with the illusion. Something you can try and do as well, which I personally don't like, is bringing the brows a little bit further down. So it again creates that kind of lift effect. I don't wanna make myself look like a crazy person or angry. <laughs> Because if you do it too much, you're going to look like you've got an angry brow or even a furrowed brow and you don't want that. So, user discretion advised. <laughs> but you're in quarantine, so who's going to see? Now is the best time to experiment with different brow shapes. Go ahead. Alright, now it's time to set the brows. So I'm just going to literally brush through my brow hairs and keep them going up in the front. And then I'm going to feather them towards my temple to, again, create that illusion. We're all going in the same direction. <laughs> up and out basically. I'm gonna be honest this isn't that much different to what my normal brow is. Obviously this is a bit crazy I'm gonna tame it in a second bear with me. <laughs> I'm just leaving the product set for a second before I move the eyebrow hairs. I mean you can keep it like this and it's gonna just help bring it up. I'm gonna just go around the edges and just kind of pull in the expressive bunch that are just a little bit wild and unruly and <laughs> just gonna tame it and polish it off. But I'm just gonna take the applicator and just slowly go around and just pull those edges in. Okay so I'm gonna do a highlight on that afterwards. Now let's zoom you guys in and let's actually get started on these eyes. <laughs> Alright so you're all zoomed in and you can see everything. So this is the eye look all done. So I wanted to make it affordable because why not? <laughs> I'm gonna be using the Wet n Wild eyeshadow palette. This is the Nude Awakening palette and it's got some great tones in here. As we're working with shadow tones, this will vary with your skin tone, with your complexion. You just wanna work with whatever sculpting products you use. If you've got a contour palette that you use, you could even use that. But for today, I'm gonna to be using this. You're gonna need kind of more smaller brushes, so smaller tools. Having an angled brush and just a little, maybe even a pencil brush would be good for this, but I've just got this little blender could just use two. For my little inner corner I wanted more precision so I've got this one as well which is a little basically a liner brush. These are all from Morphe and I'll put them on screen and in the description box while I'm applying them. But yeah let's just go on in shall we? <laughs> okay so the first shade I'm going in with is the top transition shade and this is like a beigey grey kind of colour. <laughs> so the first thing I did was I took my angled brush and the first transition shade and I started sketching out the liner and I did this by staring straight ahead at the mirror. You've got to place the shadow almost like the fold in the eyelid isn't there. <laughs> and just drag it over top don't close the eye just go right over the eye crease and line it up with your top lash line now I didn't take the line all the way across I've taken it about a third of the way across the lid you want to basically keep this whole area by here clear of that eyeshadow just to make sure you've got that pull and you've got that definition in the outer part of the eye so I'm just starting to apply the liner in the same angle we applied the cream contour and tapping off the majority of the excess I don't want too much product going in at the moment we're literally just trying to create a guide for the rest of the look and little by little I start graduating the line upwards towards the brow I'm gonna tap up this creasing on the lid because it's annoying me 
Okay, now my line is there. I can start putting the color over that area. It skipped because of my hooded eye. Note, I'm not adding any extra product. This is just what's on the brush. You may be able to see that my actual hooded eye comes down further than the actual line, and that's what we want. If you have a hooded eye that kind of comes down all the way down here, then you want to just ignore that. Just pretend it's not there. Just go over top of it. You're creating an illusion, so you want to pretend that that line's not there. <laughs> on this side my eye comes down further it actually goes past my natural lash line so it does come down quite far on this side you just want to try and fake it to make it okay <laughs> so now you have this baseline started we want to just bring it across the lid ever so slightly literally bringing it into the third just to the outer part of the lid so it pulls the rest of the eye with it so we've got like an anchor point from where it pulls out Okay, so now we have this color down. Obviously this is not harsh, but a bit more prominent as just a line right now. So we wanna really soften this. I'm taking this little brush and I'm just gonna start blending it towards the eyelid. Okay, don't go back and forth, otherwise you're gonna spread the product everywhere. Just make sure it's controlled and you're just bringing it towards the eye because we don't really want this to travel anywhere right now. Okay, so we have that kind of natural shadow starting. So we wanna now intensify it little by little. This is gonna take a little bit of building. It doesn't take too long, but I still wanna make sure it's soft. I'm just gonna go over with the same color maybe two more times and then I'll add a little bit more depth. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. So this is the kind of shape that we got going on right now. I want to add a little bit more depth. Again, I don't want to go too crazy. Going in with the same angled brush and that darker transition color in the palette. And I'm just basing this right at the lash line in itself. Once I've applied it to the lash line, I'm then gonna do a blend in motion. But let's get the actual color down first of all. Okay, now I have the base color down. I'm gonna use the excess that's on the brush. I'm gonna slowly start blending it throughout the initial shape that we've got. Just stamping it lightly and make it a gradient of the color. Again, if you've got hooded lids, eyes open. <laughs> Again, with a little blending brush pulling towards the lid. All right, now we have the shape going on. I'm just gonna set the lid. I don't really have any product on there that much. I have a tiny bit of concealer and that's what keeps creasing up. So I'm just gonna lightly pat out the creases. I do this first, I guess, but this is just the way that I like to do it. If you've made any mistakes and if you've blended over too much of the darkness, you can use this to lighten it up. I'm taking this kind of cream bone shade and I'm just gonna dust that all over the lid and I'm just using a big fluffy brush because I'm not really worried about it getting everywhere. I'm just literally applying the color. Once I've done that, I'm just taking the blending brush again and just blend in over the edges make sure there's no harshness from that shade so that's pretty much it for the outer corner what I'm just gonna do as a final touch is go in with my little sponge and just press underneath it to kind of sharpen the line slightly we don't want to actually press over the blend but it's just gonna get rid of any darkness and brighten up the area underneath so it's just gonna enhance that shape that we've made and when I'm doing this I'm pulling it right the way back to the temple having this space by here free of any darkness is really going to help with that pulled back effect. Now I'm just going to tightline with a brown eyeliner. I want you to be careful not to get any on the actual lid. This is just to add depth on the lashes. And then I'm also going to add a nude waterline pencil just to brighten up the eyes themselves. I'm going to apply a coat of mascara and then we'll get into the inner corner. Another tip with this look, if you want to enhance the look again, is when you're putting on your mascara, make sure you're pulling your eyelashes out and not up. And that again is gonna help you elongate the eye and give you that more feline fox eye or cat eye effect. I like to just apply the initial coat of mascara and then drag the mascara wand outwards and it just pulls the lashes that way. And I also do the same with the bottom lashes. I apply the mascara and just pull them towards the side and it's just gonna help pull the eye out again. So I completely forgot to add this into the shadow segment. <laughs> I'm just gonna take the tiniest amount of the first transition shade. I'm gonna put it on the outer third of my eye. I'm not bringing it all the way across. I'm literally just adding it a little bit out here. And that's just to extend the outer corner and kind of match it up. Remember not to drag the shadow down. Just add a tiny little shadow on the outer corner. Okay, so for extending the inner corner, what you wanna do with this is follow the natural shape of your eye where your tear duct starts. You wanna bring it towards your nose. You don't want to bring it down you want to bring it more across because that's going to lengthen your eye and make them look wider which is pretty much the goal 
of this whole fox eye thing. <laughs> I'm taking that second transition shade we used and start slowly extending it, doing little brush strokes. And I tap off a lot of the excess of the shadow because we don't want to go in too much too quick, just to make it easier on yourself. And you want to make sure that you're tapering it to a point. You can make this as long or as short as you like, really. I like to keep mine quite short because I don't want to make my eyes too close together. I just do a little extension and then I pull it back on itself and connect it with my lower lash line. Now you could just leave it here if you like, but I just want to reinforce it just slightly so I'm gonna go in with a tiny amount and I mean a tiny amount of the black I'm just gonna deepen it up a little bit okay and that is pretty much it okay and that is it for the eyeshadow like <laughs> there's nothing else to it although I probably made it sound a lot more complicated <laughs> <laughs> final touch that I think just kind of sets off the look is lashes. It just kind of blends it into that soup that we've got going. Best lashes for this is going to be like half lashes or a quarter even. That's pretty much what I'm doing. So I've taken my favourite lashes of the moment, <laughs> which are Prima Lashes in Imogen. They originally look like this. They're really fluffy. They are tapered on the inner corner. So what I've done, because I want to keep that taper, I've actually cut off the inner segment. Got five little segments that I'm going to use. And the way that I've applied it, I haven't put it all the way to the end of my eye. If I were to do that, I would droop my eye slightly. So I've made sure to put it just a smidgen before my eye ends. And then I've really clamped my lashes into the false lashes and it helps pull it up again. What I found helps as well is as you're clamping your lashes together with the lash, kind of tilt whatever you're using to clamp your lashes with them so they're facing more upright and that helps like merge everything together a little better. Now's the time you can go and adjust anything. I'm just gonna kind of merge my lashes in with the falsies a little bit better. Now I just want to talk about highlighting. I'm gonna take quite a soft highlight. I'm not going too crazy today. And with this you don't really want to highlight the inner corner because you've got that little triangle going on. You can if you want to but I just personally prefer to leave that area now that I've got the inner corner going on. But I'm gonna highlight this area right here, so right by the temple, and also put it on my cheekbone where I usually would. I'm also gonna put it on my forehead above my brow. That way, again, flex light brings the eye that direction. And then I'm also going to highlight the top of my brow bone, right at the peak of my arch and slightly underneath my brow, not at the tail because I don't wanna highlight downwards. I wanna keep it looking lifted. <laughs> I'm looking a little shiny because I've been filming for hours. So I'm just gonna powder down these areas. Give my highlight a chance, you know, instead of my oils. <laughs> okay, and that is everything for this eye look. Very in-depth video, I know. <laughs> I hope some of these tips helped somebody out there. <laughs> but this is what I look like with my eyes completely relaxed. As you guys can see, I still have that lifted look. Obviously, it's not perfect. I'm not a makeup artist. This is just things that I've kind of played around with and things that I think personally work and personally work on myself. Maybe they helped you too, I don't know. Anyway, let's zoom you guys out so you can see the full picture. All right, you guys, so I've lost all source of sunlight, so I'm really sorry if the lighting's off. It's also been so many hours, my hair has like completely dropped out of the curls they were originally in, so that's great. <laughs> but that is a wrap. Okay, that is it for this video. I hope you maybe learned something or you've just enjoyed the video in general. I tried to make it as informative and as in-depth as possible. This is just my take on it. I'm not a professional. I'm not a makeup artist. This is just me purely playing around and showing you guys what I do and what I've learned to really get that kind of pulled back effect without using tape, without pulling your hair back, all of those things, just simply with makeup. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna love you and leave you now. If you're new, please subscribe. If you enjoy content like this and makeup, then why not go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and the bell button just to get notified of my newer videos. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and I hope to see you on the next one. Till then, bye guys. And showed you guys a before and after so you can see the, the ooh, I've been sitting on my ass for way too long. <laughs> my butt hurts. <laughs> I did a bad thing. I've officially lost the plot. <laughs>